please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. They say that divorce is like a death, but I died during my 10 year long marriage. The passionate, sensual, creative poet and writer was gone. And despite our bitter union, my husband and I, when we came apart, were quite amicable. We moved into a tenement building three stories apart because after all, we had three beautiful beings between us. Our precocious eight-year-old son, Liam, our beautiful Siberian husky, Luna, and our sweet lap cat, Pablo Neruda. <laughs> and things actually went pretty well. We had 50-50 custody and our three kids went back and forth with relative ease. My ex and I got along better than we ever had before. So one night, about 10 months after we split, I was home in my apartment with my young son, my elderly dad was visiting, and I knew my ex was out on the town and that he had left our dog Luna home alone in his apartment. And I felt bad for her. I thought she'd be lonely and that she should be upstairs with us. And so I texted him that I was gonna go get her. And I went downstairs and Keith opened the door and the apartment was dark. Luna started running toward me and to my left I saw a big woman's purse. It was gaudy and garish and nothing like me. And as I was processing that, I heard a woman screaming, but it wasn't frightened screams. It was euphoric, pleasured screams. And I realized at that moment that my ex was in the shower with a woman. And a lot of feelings and emotion came to me at that time, but the most prevailing thought was, I want that. I want intimacy and closeness and sensuality and connection. And that in worrying about my dog's loneliness, I had discovered my own. And that night, I penned my first OK Cupid online dating profile after a decade of being married. Soon after, I got an interesting note from an interesting man, and we met up. And we liked each other, we connected, and we started dating. And we connected on a lot of different levels, intellectual, political, emotional, and physical. It was really nice. He was a writer and a musician. And we saw each other, we got each other, and we saw the best things in each other. And we started to open up windows in the other. And he started to write music again, which he hadn't done in a long time. He wanted to perform on the stage, which he also hadn't done in a long time. And I started to write poetry and short stories. And I was realizing that that sensual, creative poet was coming back to life. We were even writing stories together as co-creators, it was pretty cool. But there was something that I wanted to take him to that I had written about in my OK Cupid profile. As a fellow writer and person of depth and storyteller, I wanted to take him to the Moth Storytelling Hour. And I knew he'd love it. And so I looked at the upcoming topics, and there was a topic on baggage coming up in a couple of months. And I thought that was perfect, because to be honest, I thought he had a lot of it. <laughs> so I scored us some tickets, and we went to see the moth baggage here at Housing Works. And it was amazing. We loved it, and we analyzed all the stories. We had the same favorite. 
And afterwards, we went back to his place, and we were sitting and talking. And then very suddenly, he turned to me and said, I feel like I'm wasting your time. That, that hit me like a bullet. You see, because we had a few small problems, but we had one big problem. He was a diehard bachelor. He wasn't a fan of monogamy, much less love or long term. And even though we shared strong feelings for each other, we both knew that I didn't need to have all those things at that particular moment, but eventually I would. And so he said that he had something else to tell me, that he loved the moth. And that, in fact, he wanted to tell a story at the moth, at the next slam. And that it would even feature me and about why we couldn't be together. And I had that same feeling that I had standing outside my ex's bathroom door when he was in the shower. A moth story? I want that. <laughs> so today I'm almost 50. I'm divorced. I have a little boy who wants to spend less and less time with me. And that creative, passionate, sensual writer and poet has returned. And I've realized that sometimes it's the people you don't end up with that can be your biggest influence. And for 20 years, I've been sitting in the moth audience, watching other people tell their stories. And this is the first time I've had the courage to climb the moth store stage and tell my own. Thank you.